series of shows will be covering the Shia creed, the Shia fundamentals and explaining them and discussing the beliefs and the thoughts that oppose these beliefs and the opposing thoughts in general. We <coughs> begin with uh, justice or al-adl generally the English term doesn't give justice to the Arabic terminology that is used if you look at the creation of the world, the entire world was built upon haq, it's built upon truth the quintessence of this truth is adl the most uh, basic point of it, the source of it is Adil or justice. And if it wasn't, if it weren't for this justice in the world, this world would not exist. Now generally, we look at Tawheed and Adil. And we can't separate them from each other. They go in part and parcel, they are together. The reason for this, we must understand Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran, when he mentions in Surah Al-A'la, he mentions the verse, الَّذِي قَدَّرْ فَهَدَى Allah Azza wa Jal, he set a measurement, he set rules, and by these rules, everything was guided or everything moved upon these set laws. See, unlike the deist belief, you know, someone that believes that God exists is generally called a theist. That has theistic beliefs, unlike the atheist who does not believe in, in, in Allah's existing existence. The deist, however, has a very peculiar understanding of who or what Allah Azza wa Jal is. Their impression is basically a bit like a, a, a weird and a mad scientific experiment where someone just creates something, you know, and then just walks away from it. See, their belief is that Allah Azza wa Jal created the world. He created this entire universe and just left it. You know, I'll go to another project. I was playing with this toy and I'll move to another toy. I'll find some other experiment or I'll find some other, uh, um, uh, some other thing to play with or some other hab hobby, if you will. But that isn't the case, it's merely the case. Allah didn't turn his back on the creation as they may believe. Now, if we look at Asma'illah al-Husna, and we consider these uh, attributes, because we wonder why is it that Adil, out of all God's attributes is the one that is considered to be of utmost importance when it comes to Aqeedah, when it comes to our creed, when it comes to our belief, when it comes to the fundamentals of what we 
If we go by this is basically what our belief is set upon, why is it that we do not consider any of the other uh, attributes which are very important to be a part of our usul, usul al-deen? Why is it that Adil has taken this uh, position? Why is it one of the pillars of our belief? It is because it is essential in our very being that nothing in this world stems from Allah Taban, stems from oppression. That this isn't some cruel joke, as some people may believe. Some people refer to God as being despotic, that he's a tyrannical Lord. He's a tyrannical creator. Some view him as an overlord, a slave driver. On the contrary, Allah Azza wa Jal created the Bashar. If it weren't for him, we would not have even come into existence. On top of that, he has given us uh, many freedoms and created us for eternal existence, which is, I think, more, as Imam Amir al Mu'mineen uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallam, alayhi, says in Dua al Hazin, which you um, uh, would read if, if someone was to pray uh, Salat al Witr, it's recommended to uh, read that Dua then. He says, in it, لو لم يكن لو لم يكن إلا الموت إلا كفى that if there is if all we have is only up to until we die then that is sufficient that suffices why <coughs> it suffices because we've already got more than what we deserved and we'll expand on this as we move along. When we look at Adam. It is also what holds everything together. The world would be in absolute turmoil. There would be chaos if it wasn't for the justice. The justice of Allah that brings everything together. How important is it that even, this is according to those that uh, will challenge the creation of Allah Azza wa Jalla and that Allah created them, the, 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 the naturalists or the people that believe in uh, evolution and things coming into being um, suddenly and spontaneously in the, uh, or they say sudfa out of chance, they claim that if anything was to be different, every measurement within this earth, remember, الذي قدر فهدى, that this measurement that Allah Azza wa Jal has set was to be differ by even the breadth of a hair. Imagine if I pulled out a hair right now from my beard, more than likely it'd be a white one, but if I was to pull a, a hair out of my beard and, and you were to look at this, if you want to look at the, the, the width of it, the breadth of it, it's not something that you would actually <coughs> consider. It was always something not even worthy of mentioning. However, if the measurements were to change by that much, the world would be in chaos. Everything would be all over the place. There'd be no uniform movement. There'll be no uh, life, basically. Nothing would have existed, life would not have existed if it was to even change by that much. So you imagine the concept of justice that exists there. It's a part of every law. Now, if we look at one of the narrations on Amir al Mu'mineen, <coughs> Ali ibn Abi Talib, sallallahu wa sallam, hu he says, At Tawheed, Allah. تتوهمه والعدل أن لا تتهمه. Now, Tawheed is for another discussion, so we'll we'll put that aside. Inshallah, a discussion that we will cover in the creed. Um, generally, we do put Tawheed before Adil when it comes to discussion, but 
uh, for the sake of this series, Adil has been put in a manner, just to give you an understanding of how the concept of Allah Azza wa works, then we introduce uh, Tawheed and we'll move on to other subjects of the Shia creed. Now, وَالْعَدْلُ أَنْ لَا تَتَّهِمَهُ Now, justice he says here, the commander of the faithful, is not to lay blame on Allah. Not to lay blame. See, when something, this is what everyone does, you know, uh, as the uh, evolutionists, which you will hear plenty of mention of them, because this is the opposition that exists in our, day, in our days uh, that we are living in. They're the contemporary um, naysayers when it comes to the belief in Allah Azza wa Jal. They will always lay blame on God. They will always accuse. Anything takes place, they will lay blame on Allah Azza wa Jal. It's because of God this happened. Like I remember there was a sister that once told me that I don't believe in God. And uh, now this young lady said, I don't believe in God because Allah took my child away. And when they mention something like this, <coughs> you think to yourself, all right, what do you mean by Allah took your child? When did he pass away? She said, no, my child did not pass away. Allah took my child away, as in my child was taken to an orphanage by my parents because I had this child out of wedlock. In other words, this child is of illegitimate birth. So my parents took the child away. But automatically the blame has been laid on who? On God. What brought this child of illegitimate birth into this world? Her actions. No one forced, uh, forces you into committing fornication. You choose to do this. We have the free will. Allah Azza wa Jal. I could, for example, get up right now, I have the choice to grab the camera that I'm speaking to and, and throw it across the room. I have that choice. For people to say, no, you don't, that it, you're, you're destined to do what you do, and just in order so they can blame, lay blame on Allah, which is something we will discuss as we move further along. Allah Azza wa Jal, on the contrary, he wants good for mankind. Allah only wants what's best for us. And this is why the laws of God move along with our fitrah. This fitrah, this understanding that Allah has placed within us, in fact, we don't like any of the despicable actions. How many of you like to be lied to? Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen, salawatullah ala Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. Tab and we always mention his words. He is, and, and we mention the words of Amir al-Mu'mineen, and he is the doorway to Medina al-Alim, which is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. <coughs> it has nothing to do with those that try and say that we have preference. There is no preference. Rasulullah is God's greatest creation, just a point that I put forward. But Amir al-Mu'mineen is the gateway to the city of knowledge. So Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu wa sallam when we mention about those that lie, he says suffices, it is sufficient that the liar wants to be known as truthful. This should suffice in showing the um, uh, or the ugliness of, uh, I'm paraphrasing, this isn't verbatim with the narration, it's the meaning of it. <coughs> of lying. This should suffice to show that lying isn't good. That no one's, how many people do you know tell a lie and expect you to think that they're lying? They tell one of their fishing stories, I caught a fish and it was this big, and they actually sit there and, 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 and expect everyone to think that they're lying. No, they expect you to believe them and think, wow, you know, I'm, I'm sitting in front of um, Captain Ahab, you know, and this is, this is what they want you to, um, uh, uh, 
this is what they want you to um, think of them. So anyway, if we are to look at everything within us, and with Allah's creation, the placement of every body part, the placement of our brain, that is the, the, the main control of the whole body, is in the utmost position. It is covered with what? It's covered with a skull to protect it. Our eyes, our eyes have shutters that work instantaneously to protect them. And as we go less important, come on, everything within our body is important, but we move further down. The central system of utmost importance is on the head. The hearing, the seeing, the tasting, the thinking, it's all in the head. If we look at the positions of the sun and the moon, that if the moon was any closer to the earth, we would drown. This is why when fishermen check out the tides, they check the tide to know when to go fishing because the, the, the closer the moon comes, that magnetic pull that it has on the water, that brings the water up. If it was any nearer to the earth, it would allow us to have pretty much what's similar to tsunamis. Same with the sun. The sun was to get any closer, we would burn. If you, if you notice, um, <coughs> scientists uh, and, uh, endeavor to travel to other planets. They always move in the other direction. No one moves towards Mercury. Everyone moves away. No one moves towards uh, Mercury and Venus. Everyone moves towards um, uh, Mars. Our two closest planets are, are Venus and Mars. However, the, the problem with Venus, it's, it's the hottest planet. It's hotter than Mercury, even though Mercury's closer to the sun. And then you've got um, Mars on the other side, which is cool. In, in regard to Venus. So these are the planets that are closer to us. If the sun was to even move a minute amount or, uh, or, or, or um, uh, sorry, distance, a minute distance towards the Earth, we would be scorched. This is with regard to the creation. Everything it's in it is, it's in its, is in its right place. Even the um, <coughs> even the amount of oxygen that we have on the, in the Earth. If you uh, look in our atmosphere, the most abundant element in the atmosphere is nitrogen. Although the most uh, uh, when it comes to putting people in, in, in hospitals and uh, giving them a respirator, what they're being given is oxygen, because oxygen is so important. You know, The higher the level of oxygen in our blood, the more important. We need to have a level of oxygen that's over 95%. Now, so it's good for us to get 100% oxygen, nothing wrong with it. However, there's another nasty, uh, element in this earth that also enjoys oxygen and that's fire. Fire breathes oxygen just like we do and, 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 and if the amount of oxygen were to increase on this earth things would spontaneously combust, things would start burning. You see people walking the street, this isn't imaginary, you know, you can research this, that if, if we had that much oxygen the flashpoint of, uh, for a fire to exist, for things to take place with oxygen there, would be much, much higher. One of the ways to turn out a fire is to smother it, to cut off the oxygen, because once the oxygen's cut off, it dies. Even that has a set amount that's it. Also a day of judgment, there is that proof, sorry, also with Adil, there is a proof of a day of res resurrection, a day of judgment, where in Surah Luqman, he mentions, Ya Bunay, inna intaku مثقال حبة من خردل فتكن في صخرة أو في السماوات أو في الأرض يأتي بها الله إن الله لطيف خبير. Now, look at this verse. That Luqman is speaking. This is the justice of God. Nothing disappears. There's none of this magic where things are just going to the speed that I can commit something that no one will ever know about. No crime will go on punished. 
Nothing will go. You know, there's situations where someone's been blamed, you know, especially the, the tragic stories you read or hear or people have watched and, 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 and they tear themselves apart. They say, I want to kill this character. How is this happening? What is taking place here? It affects them so much. They will not get away with it. No one will get away with what they do. He says, Ya Bunay, innaha in taqu mithqala habbatin min khardal. That he's speaking to his child about habbatin min khardal. What's khardal? A mustard seed. Why a mustard seed? Have you seen how small? Next time, go into a grocery store for, for the youth, because the, the mothers and, and, and those that cook know exactly what I'm talking about. But I want you to go and ask to see a mustard seed. It is so small. It's very minute. This small, he says, if it is the size of a mustard seed, and then he says, Fatakun fi sakhra. That even if it's inside, when we mention a sakhra here, even if it's inside the heart of a rock or a stone, it's inside there, it's hidden. He says, Alf al samawat. Now, Alf al samawat is even bigger. Why? Alf al samawat somewhere lost in the heavens, in the universe. Some mustard seed out there, Ofil Ard, <coughs> or on this earth, it's hidden somewhere. He comes along to say what? He says, Yati Allah. Allah will bring you on the day of judgment. He'll bring it to light. He will let everyone know this is what took place. In Allah Latifun Khabir. What does it mean, in Allah Latifun Khabir? What is he saying that he, Allah Azza wa Jal, speaking of that he knows, Latif, inno, that he knows the subtleties, he knows all those little hidden things. Khabir, he's aware. It's not like I'm doing something that God doesn't know. Like in the old days, even today, look at the, the rulers, the despots, the tyrants that rule. The time of Joseph Stalin, I remember when we used to study modern history, that the people living out near Siberia, they were in the gulags, in prisons, under the rule of Stalin, they would say only if Stalin know, knew what was happening to us. There's people today living under tyrants, and you, are, you tell them that there's torture in this country or that someone's been uh, oppressed. They tell you, oh, but the leader of this country doesn't know. What do you mean he doesn't know? This is a big issue if he doesn't know. Why is he leaving a country where he doesn't know what's taking place? Of course he knows what's taking place. He's just like Joseph Stalin. Allah knows. He knows that you, this innocent person that didn't think that it would be Stalin torturing me, he will make it. He's aware of what takes place. He's aware, aware when someone is giving secret counsel to someone else in order to make trouble, in order for torture to take, to, to, to take place, etc., etc. So on and so forth. Now, this is what takes place here. Allah sees all. Allah sees all. Part of his judgment will take place on the earth. You know, part of the justice and adl Allah takes part, not all, will take place here. And then all of it on the day of judgment. The day of judgment, which we don't want to enter into too much detail, is a day where the justice of God becomes manifest in its fullest. No one gets away with anything on that day. Even when it came comes to tyrants, as I mentioned Stalin, part will be seen in this world and the rest on the day of judgment. Take for example Benito Mussolini. Benito Mussolini, who was a tyrant before Hitler. In fact, Hitler's uh, tyrannical rule was, uh, and his uh, doctrine, and his uh, uh, party, uh, and his uh, Nazism party, was uh, molded upon the, the fascist thought of um, Benito Mussolini. 
But I'm also mean, I thought of one, and I, I like to mention contemporary or people that were in within the last century. So people that have studied and actually see something that took place with these. Now, Benito Mussolini was killed by the people, and his body was dragged through the streets, and he was strung up. Uh, his naked body was strung up, but he still has hell to look forward to. Likewise, Saddam in Iraq. Saddam, in many ways, the justice of God was shown with Saddam in the dunya before the Akhir. Saddam prevented, sorry, Saddam tortured people in prison. Saddam was tortured. Saddam forced people to hide underground and in holes. And Saddam was hidden in a hole, in a rat hole, like a, an, an, an underground animal he was dragged out. <coughs> Saddam used to kill people and prevent them from mourning their dead. When his sons were killed, he was prevented from mourning them. They still brought him into the courtroom. Saddam eventually took people in an unfair trial and hung them and the same thing happened to him. His trial wasn't complete. They didn't give him the, the, the same appeals as they or the, that we observe in, in all Western democracies. You know, when someone's on death row in Western democracy, it takes a decade or so for them to hang or, or to, to see the chair. Whereas Saddam was dragged, taken out on the blessed day of Eid al-Adha and no one gave him regard, not even to celebrate the hate. Taken and hung like he did to those before him, and then he still has the day of judgment to look forward to. These are just but a few examples of Allah's uh, justice on this earth before the day of judgment. <coughs> we ask Allah Azza wa Jal not to just judge us on the day of judgment with this adal, but to look upon us with his mercy and with the intercession of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Bissalat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Walhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa Ali al-Tayyibin al-Tahirin.